today we're going to talk about the selection tool in Art Ridge. Now the selection tool does not create any kind of paint at all. It is used as a mask. It is used to copy and paste and it is used to transform. So we're going to look at that today. This is not a drawing tutorial. This is really look at how to use the selection tools. So from time to time, uh, the illustration in the back is going to switch between time lapse, which is sped up, and real time. So you can see what I'm doing in real time. And it's going to be usually in real time when I want to look at what I use this lecture tool for. Here I'm going to use the selection tool to control my shadow area. It does have some very sharply defined areas and the selection tool will be good for that. So you can see I filled in all the sharp areas and then I went back with the airbrush tool to soften one edge because shadows are a combination of hard and soft edges. That's what keeps you from having that computer look because um, a lot of people just do everything with hard edges and that gives that cutout effect. And here I've used the selection for the shadow on the nose. Again, I want a combination of hard and soft edges so the selection helps me to create that hard edge first and because I only want the shadow in a certain area I just don't want it to spread all over the place now I want to create a shadow on the side of the face so and also where it meets uh, the chin meets the hand the fingers 
I'm using this selection there because I want the hard edge for the fingers and the hand and the chin. And also when you're doing the selection, you don't have to go to both edges. See how I made my selection much larger than I need it to be? That's because now I can create the soft edge while I'm creating my hard edge. So the hard edge is on the left and I leave the soft edge that I create on the right. So I don't have to go to the whole selection. That's another way to use the selection effectively. Uh, because I have one flat color, I have all these colors broken down, skin, the top, the hair, on separate layers. So I can make selections as I need to just by choosing select layer contents. Okay, now I'm going to uh, make a selection and select the cleavage. And I'm going to use the same technique I used before, where I have the selection larger area than I wanted, and so I can have a hard edge and a soft edge. And now I'm going to choose the transform tool after I make my selection. And I'm going to rotate that and move it over. And I think that has a better look than what I had before. Selecting the top, and I'm going to use select layer contents. And it's easier when you have just one piece of content on the layer that you want to work on. Um, I mean, could I either have three separate pieces of content on this layer and to select them all? But this is the most effective thing. This is the, the way I use it. So now you hear, you see, I'm um, using it to add a darker shadow on the top. And this way I don't go into the skin or into the background. going to do the same process again go to the hair layer and select layer contents for the hair so that I can make sure all my shading stays within the hair area create a stencil for my selection so now I select stencil from contents make stencil for contents and I have a stencil that I can use later. So in case I did mess up the hair, I have different levels of opacity. Now I know when I use the stencil, I'll be at 100% paint uh, when I use that. So I can call the stencil back whenever I need it. So 
you can see how effective it is using this selection tool uh, to mask out areas that I don't want to get any paint onto and especially helpful with shadows So I've selected the hair again, and as you can see, I've saved this toward the end specifically, because I noticed it right away, that I have a shadow from the arm over the hair, and the hair is in front of the arm. And there's no way it can create a shadow on the hair. So I want to be sure I was pretty much finished with the hair um, before I did anything. So I'm kind of confident that it, at this point. Uh, where the hair is going so and I need to put a shadow on the hair down there so I need to get rid of that shadow from the arm well, I've, I've already given up on cat, catching a likeness that's long gone uh, so this is really a reference photo for the skin and the shadow and the light. Now I have to fix this nose. She has such a cute nose and I have not done it justice at all. It's kind of short and stubby and hers is long and has a nice little cute upturn at the end. Okay, now I'm going to go back to that shadow area on the face and the hand and the hair. I'm 
because a lot of the drawing doesn't work without that that pose without the where the shadow shadows meet on all those areas. So I'm trying very carefully to go on where the shadows on the, is on the hair and on the hand and on the face and where they meet. I'm trying to be very careful about that. I don't want to go into the hand right now. I'm going to work that separately. I just want to work the shadow area. So I'm using a freehand tool to select that area. Okay, I'm going to go back in and work the hair some more. I discarded what I had previously because since this drawing has gone in a different direction uh, than I want it, I need to do the hair a different way. And so I'm going to keep that very stylized because I like the way that looks. And also the arm became very rendered too quickly. So you really want to render the point of focus and that should be the face and the, especially the eyes. And the arms really drawing too much attention. So I printed the face a little bit more. So it brought some attention back to the face. And now with the hair, I just want to do the shadows differently. So I've gone back to my silhouette. Uh, not my silhouette, I've gone to my stencil so that I can make sure I'm drawing in the hair area only. Okay, so this drawing came out very different than I wanted and I don't know if that's because I was concentrating on trying to use stencils because I did use stencils much more than I use on a normal uh, illustration like this. Uh, with a, I, I usually do another method uh, which I'll show you another time uh, but this was about stencils so I tried to show you as much as what you can do with stencils possible and I hope I accomplished that now uh, I'm going to take my weird looking drawing which has cartoon eyes on a realistic face maybe this is the start of a new style if I can get it under control uh, but this is definitely the first time a drawing has kind of gotten away from me in a good way, I could have kind of drew itself. This was not what I had in mind, but I think it's still a, a good drawing. I may go back and rework the eyes uh, so that it, they seem to fit better. But I don't know. Tell me what you think. Maybe they look good to you. I'm too close to the situation. That is it for today. Thanks for stopping by.